Cops search for missing girl yields an emotional discovery that will touch your heart. It was a chilly autumn afternoon when the small town of Maplewood was shaken by the sudden disappearance of six-year-old Audrey Meyer. Known for her bright smile and infectious laughter, Audrey was a beloved child in the community, and her absence sent shockwaves through the tight-knit town. Officer Leo Bennett, a seasoned cop with over 15 years on the force, had seen his fair share of crisis. But something about Audrey's disappearance hit him harder than he expected. Maybe it was the fact that he had known the Mayas since their move to Maplewood three years ago. Or perhaps it was the memory of his own daughter, Emma, who had passed away two years ago in a tragic car accident. Whatever the reason, Leo was determined to find Audrey and bring her back to her parents. The call came in just after 3 o'clock p.m. Audrey had been playing in the park near her home, under the watchful eye of her grandmother. But when her grandmother turned her back for just a moment, Audrey had vanished. A frantic search of the park and surrounding areas yielded nothing, and by the time Leo arrived on the scene, it was clear that something was terribly wrong. Leo's heart sank as he spoke with Mrs. Meyer, Audrey's mother. Her eyes were red from crying, her voice trembling with fear. Please, Officer Bennett, you have to find her. She's just a little girl. She wouldn't just wander off. Leo placed a reassuring hand on Mrs. Meyer's shoulder, though he felt anything but reassured himself. We'll find her, Mrs. Meyer. I promise. As he began organizing a search, Leo couldn't shake the image of Audrey's innocent face from his mind. She was a sweet, curious child, always full of questions and energy. The thought of her being out there, scared and alone, tore at his heart. The search continued into the night, with volunteers from the town joining the effort. Every nook and cranny of Maplewood was scarred, but there was no sign of Audrey. As the hours passed, Leo's worry grew, but he refused to give up. He knew that the first 24 hours were critical in any missing person case, especially when it involved a child. As dawn broke the following morning, Leo found himself standing at the edge of the woods on the outskirts of town. The dense forest had been come through multiple times, but something drew Leo back to it. He couldn't explain it, but a nagging feeling in his gut told him that they had missed something. He radioed his partner, Officer Landon Sullivan, and informed her that he was heading back into the woods for another search. Be careful, Leo, Landon replied. We've been through those woods already, but if you think there's something we missed, I trust your instincts. Liu appreciated Landon's support. She had been his partner for years, and they had developed a bond of trust that went beyond the job. With a deep breath, Liu stepped into the woods, determined to find the answers that had eluded them so far. The woods were thick with fog as Liu made his way deeper into the trees. The silence was almost oppressive, broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves underfoot. He had been through these woods countless times before, but today, they felt different, darker, more foreboding. Leo moved slowly, his eyes scanning the ground for any sign that Audrey had passed through here. His flashlight being cut through the mist, illuminating the path ahead. But there was nothing, no footprints, no broken branches, nothing to indicate that Audrey had come this way. But still, Leo couldn't shake the feeling that he was close. He pressed on, his breath visible in the cold air as he pushed through the underbrush. He tried to imagine what Audrey would have done if she had wandered into the woods. Would she have called out for help? Would she have hidden scared of the dark? The thoughts raced through his mind as he continued his search, his heart pounding in his chest. And then just as he was beginning to doubt himself, he saw it, a small piece of fabric caught on a thorny bush, fluttering in the breeze. Leo's heart leaped as he recognized the fabric. It was pink, just like the dress Audrey had been wearing when she disappeared, he carefully untangled the fabric from the bush and held it up to the light. There was no doubt in his mind. This was Audrey's dress. He radioed Landon immediately. I found something. A piece of Audrey's dress. I'm going to keep searching but we might be on the right track. Got it. Landon replied, her voice tinged with hope. I'll send back up your way. Leo continued deeper into the woods, now more determined than ever. The discovery of the fabric had reignited his hope and he was certain that Audrey was close. He followed the faint trail left behind by the torn dress, his senses on high alert. After what felt like hours of searching, Liu came across a small clearing. It was a quiet, serene spot, with a few large rocks and a small stream running through it. But what caught his attention was the old weathered cabin that stood at the edge of the clearing. 
The cabin looked like it had been abandoned for years, its roof partially caved in, and its walls covered in ivy. But something about it felt off, like it was hiding something. Liu approached the cabin cautiously, his hand resting on the grip of his gun. As he reached the door, he heard a sound, a faint, muffled sob coming from inside the cabin. His heart skipped a beat. Could it be? Liu drew his gun and carefully pushed the door open, the rusty hinges creaking in protest. The inside of the cabin was dark and musty, the air thick with the smell of decay. But as his eyes adjusted to the dim light, he saw her. Baldry was huddled in the corner of the cabin, her arms wrapped tightly around her knees, her face streaked with tears. She looked up at Leo with wide, terrified eyes, her small body trembling with fear. Baldry, Leo's voice was choked with emotion as he holstered his gun and knelt down beside her. It's okay, sweetie. You're safe now. Baldry didn't move at first, too scared to believe that she was really being rescued. But then, as Leo gently reached out to her, she launched herself into his arms, clinging to him with all her might. Leo held her close, feeling her tiny body shaking against his. I've got you, Audrey. You're safe. I'm going to take you home. As Leo carried Audrey out of the cabin and into the clearing, he couldn't help but wonder how she had ended up there. The cabin was miles from the park where she had disappeared, and there were no signs of a struggle. It was as if she had just walked there on her own, but that didn't make any sense. Baldry was exhausted with her head resting on Leo's shoulder as he made his way back through the woods. She didn't speak, and Leo didn't push her. He knew that she had been through a traumatic experience and needed time to process everything that had happened. When they finally emerged from the woods, Landon was waiting for them with a team of officers. The relief on her face was evident as she rushed over to them. Oh my god, Leo, you found her. Leo nodded, his voice heavy with emotion. She's safe, but she's been through a lot. Landon gently took Audrey from Leo's arms, wrapping her in a warm blanket. We'll get her checked out at the hospital, make sure she's okay. As the officers escorted Audrey to the waiting ambulance, Leo couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The cabin, the torn dress, the fact that Audrey was found miles from where she had disappeared, it all pointed to something more sinister than just a lost child. He knew that he needed to find out what had really happened, but first he needed to make sure that Audrey was safe and cared for. He followed the ambulance to the hospital, where Audrey was admitted for observation. The doctors assured Leo that she was physically unharmed, but it was clear that she had been through a frightening ordeal. Mrs. Maya arrived at the hospital soon after, rushing to Audrey's side with tears streaming down her face. Oh, my baby. Thank you, Officer Bennett. Thank you for bringing her back to me. Liu nodded, his heart heavy with the weight of the unanswered questions that still lingered. She's safe now, Mrs. Maya. That's what matters. As Mrs. Maya held Audrey close, Liu stepped out of the room, giving them some privacy. He leaned against the wall, running a hand through his hair as he tried to make sense of everything that had happened. Landon joined him in the hallway, her expression mirroring his own confusion. What do you think happened out there, Leo? How did Audrey end up in that cabin? I don't know, Leo admitted, his voice filled with frustration. But I'm going to find out. The next few days were a whirlwind of activity as the investigation into Audrey's disappearance intensified. Leo and Landon worked tirelessly, interviewing everyone who had been at the park that day, searching for any clues that might explain how Audrey had ended up in the cabin. But the more they dug, the more questions they uncovered. There were no witnesses who had seen Audrey leave the park, no signs of a struggle and no evidence that anyone else had been involved. It was as if she had simply vanished into thin air. Leo couldn't shake the feeling that there was something they were missing, something hidden beneath the surface. He spent hours going over the case files, looking for any details that might have been overlooked. It was during one of these late-night sessions that Leo's phone buzzed with a text message. He glanced at the screen and saw that it was from Landon. Landon, Leo, I found something. Meet me at the station. Leo didn't waste any time. He grabbed his keys and headed to the station, his mind racing with possibilities. When he arrived, Landon was waiting for him, her face serious. I was going through the old case files, looking for anything that might be connected to Audrey's disappearance, Landon explained, and I found something disturbing. She handed Leo a file, and as he opened it, he felt a chill run down his spine. The file was from a case that had occurred almost 20 years ago. 
a case involving the disappearance of another young girl, who had been found in the exact same cabin where Audrey had been discovered. Leo's hands trembled as he read through the details. The girl, whose name was Leah Bennett, had been found after being missing for three days. Like Audrey, she had been unharmed but was unable to explain how she had ended up in the cabin. The case had never been solved, and the investigation had gone cold. This can't be a coincidence, Leo muttered, his mind racing. There has to be a connection. Landon nodded. I thought the same thing. But there's more. I did some digging into the cabin's history, and it turns out that it was once owned by a man named Christian Brooks. Leo's brow furrowed. Christian Brooks. That name sounds familiar. It should, Landon replied. Brooks was a suspect in Leah Bennett's disappearance, but there was never enough evidence to charge him. He was a recluse, lived alone in that cabin for years before he passed away. Leo's mind was reeling as he tried to process everything. The pieces of the puzzle were starting to come together, but there were still so many unanswered questions. Do you think Brooks could have been involved in Audrey's disappearance too? It's possible, Landon said, but he's been dead for over a decade. If he was involved, then someone else must have taken over after he died. Leo nodded, his jaw set with determination. We need to find out who that someone is. With a renewed sense of purpose, Leo and Landon delved deeper into the investigation. They interviewed anyone who had known Christian Brooks, searching for any clues that might link him to Audrey's disappearance. They also revisited the cabin, combing through every inch of the property in search of evidence. It was during one of these visits that Leo made a shocking discovery. Hidden beneath a loose floorboard in the cabin, he found a small box, its surface covered in dust and cobwebs. Inside the box were a collection of old photographs, letters, and a worn journal. As Leo carefully sifted through the contents, he realized that the journal had belonged to Christian Brooks. The entries were dated from the time of Leah Bennett's disappearance, and they detailed Brooks's growing obsession with the young girl. Leo's heart hounded as he read through the disturbing entries, which revealed that Brooks had been watching Leah for months before she disappeared. He had become fixated on her, convinced that she was the reincarnation of his deceased daughter, who had died in a tragic accident years earlier. The journal entries grew darker as Brooks's obsession deepened. He wrote about how he had taken Leah to the cabin, hoping to save her from the world, and how he had planned to keep her there forever. But something had gone wrong, and Leah had managed to escape. Brooks had covered his tracks, leaving no evidence behind, and the case had remained unsolved. Leo felt sick as he read the final entry, which was dated just days before Brooks's death. In it, Brooks wrote about how he had failed to save Leah, but that he would not make the same mistake again. He vowed to find another child, someone who could take Leah's place. Leo's mind was racing as he realized the implications of what he had just read. Brooks had been a disturbed man, driven by his grief and delusions, and he had taken Leah in a twisted attempt to replace his lost daughter, but who had continued Brooks's twisted legacy after his death? And why have they taken Audrey? Leo knew that he needed to find out, but he also knew that he had to protect Audrey from the truth. She had already been through so much, and he didn't want to cause her any more pain. As he carefully placed the journal back in the box, Leo's thoughts turned to Audrey. She had been so brave throughout the entire ordeal, and he knew that she deserved to be with her family, safe and loved. Leo took a deep breath and made a decision. He would keep the details of the investigation quiet for now, at least until they had more answers. Audrey's safety was his top priority, and he would do whatever it took to protect her. With the journal and photographs in hand, Leo and Landon continued their investigation, determined to uncover the truth. They followed every lead, interviewed anyone who might have known Brooks, and searched for any evidence that could link him to Audrey's disappearance. It was a grueling process, but eventually, they began to piece together the puzzle. They discovered that Brooks had left behind a small fortune, which had been inherited by a distant relative, a man named Jason Evans. Evans had been living in a nearby town, keeping a low profile and staying out of the public eye. He had no known connection to Maplewood, and there was no reason to suspect him, until now. Leo and Landon obtained a warrant and searched Evans's property, hoping to find evidence that would link him to Audrey's disappearance. What they found was shocking. In the basement of Evans's home, they discovered a hidden room filled with photographs and mementos of young girls, 
Girls who had gone missing over the years. Among the items was a photograph of Audrey, taken just days before she disappeared. Liu's heart raced as he realized that Evans had been following in Brooks's footsteps, continuing his twisted legacy of abducting young girls. But why? What was driving him? The answers came when they confronted Evans at his home. He was a broken man, consumed by his own grief and delusions. He confessed to abducting Audrey, explaining that he believed she was the reincarnation of his own lost daughter, who had died in a tragic accident years earlier. Evans had taken Audrey to the cabin, hoping to save her from the world, just as Brooks had done with Lear. But when he saw how scared she was, he couldn't go through with it. He had left her in the cabin, hoping that someone would find her and take her home. Lear felt a mixture of anger and pity as he listened to Evans's confession. He had been a victim of his own grief, driven to commit unspeakable acts in a misguided attempt to fill the void left by his daughter's death. But despite everything, Leo couldn't help but feel a sense of relief. Audrey was safe, and the man responsible for her abduction was in custody. The nightmare was finally over. With Evans behind bars and the truth finally revealed, Audrey was able to return to her family and begin the healing process. The town of Maplewood rallied around the Myers, offering their support and love during this difficult time. Leo continued to visit Audrey, checking in on her and making sure that she was adjusting to life after the ordeal. She was a resilient child, and with the help of her family and a therapist, she began to regain her sense of security. But the experience had left its mark on Leo as well. He couldn't help but think about his own daughter, Emma, and how much he missed her. The pain of losing her had never fully gone away, but in helping Audrey, he had found a sense of purpose and healing. One evening, as he sat with Audrey and her family in their living room, Mrs. Meyer turned to him with tears in her eyes. Lou, we can never thank you enough for what you've done. You saved our little girl, and we're forever grateful. Leo shook his head, his voice thick with emotion. I was just doing my job, Mrs. Meyer, but I'm glad I could help. Audrey looked up at Leo with a shy smile. You're my hero, Officer Bennett. Leo's heart swelled with emotion as he looked into Audrey's bright, innocent eyes. You're the real hero, Audrey. You are so brave. As he left the Myers home that night, Leo felt a sense of peace that he hadn't felt in years. He had found Audrey, brought her back to her family, and in doing so, he had begun to heal the wounds that had been left by his own loss. Leo knew that the road ahead wouldn't be easy for Audrey, for her family, or for himself. But he also knew that they would get through it together, with love and support. As he drove home, the stars shining brightly in the night sky, Leo felt a sense of hope for the first time in a long while. The journey to finding Audrey had been difficult, but it had also brought him closer to heeding his own heart. And as he thought about the future, Leo knew that he would continue to do everything in his power to protect the people he cared about, just as he had protected Audrey. Because in the end, it was love that truly mattered, the love that he had for his daughter, the love that he had for his community, and the love that he had found in helping others. And that love would guide him, no matter what challenges lay ahead. A year had passed since Audrey's abduction, and the town of Maplewood had slowly returned to normal. But for Leo, life would never be the same. The experience had changed him in ways he couldn't fully explain. He had found a sense of purpose in helping Audrey, a purpose that had been missing since Emma's death. And in helping Audrey, he had also begun to heal his own heart. Leo had thrown himself into his work, determined to make a difference in the lives of others. He had taken on more cases, helping families in need, and had even started a support group for parents who had lost children. But despite everything, Leo knew that he couldn't do it alone. He had reached out to his family, rekindling relationships that had been strained since Emma's death. He had also reconnected with old friends, finding solace in their support. And most importantly, he had found peace within himself. The pain of losing Emma would never fully go away, but he had learned to live with it, to accept it as a part of his journey. As he stood on the porch of his home, looking out at the sunset, Leo felt a sense of contentment that he hadn't felt in years. He had faced his demons, and in doing so, he had found a new purpose in life. Audrey's abduction had been a turning point for Leo, a moment that had forced him to confront his own pain and find a way to move forward, and in helping her, he had also helped himself. As he watched the sun dip below the horizon, Leo smiled, knowing that the future was bright.
He had reclaimed his life, and he was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Because in the end, it was love that had brought him back from the brink, love for his daughter, love for his community, and love for the people he had sworn to protect. And that love would guide him, no matter where life took him.